Probably like a medium difficult problem. Uh, what you have to do, here's really the question, okay? Let's start backwards so you can see where we're going to go. You want to know if that will precipitate. Well, this is your KSP, will it precipitate, standard problem. It's a combination of two standard problems. So on this side, backwards, working backwards a little bit, if you write out the reaction, AgCl solid goes to Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. To find out will it precipitate, you know the K value, and you compare that value to Q. So K is from the textbook or in the problem or whatever. I'm sure it's in the text somewhere. Q is what you want to calculate. And you need to know the concentration of silver and the concentration of chlorine. Once you know Q, mathematically you calculate it. You compare it to K, that answers the question, will it precipitate? Okay? Is the end of the problem okay? Okay. The problem is uh, finding these concentrations. Uh, now, this concentration comes from right here. 0.1 molar sodium chloride. Sodium, you forget about it. It's not involved. Usually, you would say that chlorine's a spectator ion, but in this case, we find out it can cause it to precipitate. So I'm not going to ca cancel out the chlorine, where in other cases, I usually would. So we have the moles. You have the volume. So you can find the concentration of this. Let's just do that to finish to do the end of the problem first. Um, it looks like it's concentration of Cl is going to be 0 0.010 moles, which is this value right here, divided by the total volume, one liter. That value goes right there. I'm halfway to Q. The other half is extremely painful to find this concentration now. Okay, so you see how it's like a different, like previous problems we've done before? To find this one that was a little more involved. Uh, and that involves the new concept in this section which is called KF. It's the last K value you're going to learn. Last one in the K family. And that has to do with forming complex ions. So here, uh, and you would have have to be given this, the following reaction. But the, the following reaction will happen. Ag plus, plus, uh, I think it's two ammonias, forms AgNH3, two plus. Let me make sure I copied that down right. Yeah. And those are all aqueous. Everything there is aqueous. So you can see that this nitrate is totally irrelevant. It's a spectator ion. It's the conjugate of nitric acid. So all that's involved is the NH3 and the AG. And you see they mix. 0.1 mole of this and 1 liter of 1 mole of that. Okay. Uh, this reaction pretty much has to be given to you because it's more of a 2C reaction, but they introduce the math into B, we introduce the reactions into C. Okay, so you have that reaction. The concept that's introduced, this has a KF value. It's called a formation constant, formation of a complex ion. This is called a complex ion. When you have a transition metal with something on it, and this something's called a ligand, it's usually a base. So when you have a base on a transition metal, that's how you know it's a complex ion. So, when you have transition metals, there's a special K, just like KSP, it looks a little bit backwards of KSP. Usually, like, this would be a solid, and then you go to the ions. Well, this happens to be aqueous, and you're forming everything, and this is aqueous. KF happens to be a huge number. So, we're explaining, like, 10 to the 8, 10 to the 10, big numbers. It's exactly the opposite of KSP. Huge numbers for KF. So, the forward reaction is very favorable. Okay? Where at KSP, the reverse reaction is very favorable because K is very small. So that's the new concept. KF is big. All right. Now that you know that, everything else is pretty much the same. So
so we want to plug in our values here. Uh, and the initial concentrations, we have 0.1 moles in one liter. And we can do this, I, I'm really going to be doing this first part in moles because the first part is the stoichiometry part of the problem. Second, we'll do the ice table. But it really doesn't matter because you're in one liter. So the moles and molarity are going to be equal. So this is going to be 0 0.10 moles. And this is going to be one mole, or one liter times one molar is one mole. How do you know what to do with the stoichiometry? Like when, it, when you don't have, when you have moles of both reactants? Okay, yeah, I can answer that. Uh, and you have a zero here. No, not necessarily. Uh, how do you just, uh, one way is types of problems. This type of problem, usually you're gonna use it, you're gonna use it with buffers, titrations, uh, those types of problems. Another way though you can really know, uh, you look at the reaction direction, and I'll write that in here, in this color, like that. That's the reaction direction, okay? It's, you, you know it's going forward. There better not be a zero there. If there is a zero in the direction the reaction's going, you have to do a stoichiometry part first. Uh, let me see if I can think of a buffer problem where you would have done that. Or like, a, let's say your typical titration, okay, so sidebar, not related to the problem. Your typical titration, let's say you're titrating acetic acid, uh, HC2H3O2, and you're adding sodium hydroxide in some part of the titration. So you would say, and they, you have the uh, moles of this, like uh, one mole, and say this is two moles. Okay, when you're doing this titration, this reaction is going to go forward. Why is it going to go forward 100%? Strong base. Strong base. Okay, or in other words, K is really big for this reaction. In the same way that K is really big here. So, when you write your products, sodium acetate, plus water. Here you're starting off with zeros. 